Hey, everybody. Welcome to Internet Roundup. Josh is still getting work done. That's how real this show is. got to work. <laughs> you blasting something out on the wire? <laughs> on the AP wire? That's what I call it when I tweet. <laughs> I'm blasting something out on the wire. They still have the wire, right? That's a thing. Uh, yeah, AP's still around. UPI. But, I mean, it doesn't come through AFP. on a little ticker tape, does it? That'd be uh, wonderful. I don't think so. They should totally do that. That would slow news down tremendously That'd be if awesome. we went back to that. <laughs> The president said, <laughs> uh, this is Internet Roundup. I think I said that. That's Josh and I'm Chuck. Yeah. We do the Stuff You Should Know podcast and we round up the internet two at a time. And I'm going to call this episode Super Interesting Thing and Very Boring Thing. But it's good tips. There's some good tips in there. We'll see. And I got honey on this this page. Ooh. I was like highlighting. I'm like, what is going on? Honey. That makes it sexy research. <laughs> Is it? I guess so. <laughs> On sleep. So uh, you found this first thing, which, uh, mind blown. One of the weirdest, most fascinating little stories I've ever heard. Yeah, you mean I went to Key West once, and there's this really bizarre little museum in some oh, so you bizarre saw this. little, yeah, um, bizarre little fort. And it's almost like you get the impression it's just some dude's museum. That's kind of the presentation. Yeah, it probably is. And there's a big exhibit about Carl von Kassel on there. All right, so Carl, Carl von Kassler. <laughs> Carl Tansler, uh, a.k.a. Carl Count Carl von Kassel. Kassler. He, he, Kassel. Kassel, yeah. He, he self-named himself. <laughs> he did. As a count. He, he abandoned his family moving from Germany to America and was like, I'm a count now. Yeah, so this is 1927, to, just to set this up. Uh, he was 50 years old at the time, moved to Key West. Uh, like you said, he abandoned his family like a good guy. And um, uh, he's he was eccentric. Let's just start it with that. Well, he said that he had like nine PhDs mm -hmm. and a lot of other credentials that uh, he never could be bothered to produce in person. Sure. So he took a job as, a, I think, a radiologist maybe or a radiologist tech. Yeah, an x-ray tech. And... Um, he also was uh, working as a bacteria in the bacteriological lab, I believe. He got a job at the hospital. In his spare time, he built an airship, is what it says. That's right. <laughs> and he made a homemade organ that uh -huh. he, he used to play. So clearly, the guy had a little something to him, right? Sure. And while he was working at the hospital once, he saw that there was a beautiful Spanish-Cuban girl who mm -hmm. had come in with tuberculosis. And he just fell in love with her. And he said, I'm going to make you better. And that didn't work. So he's like, I'm going to buy you a bunch of gifts. Mm -hmm. And that did kind of work. She's like, thanks for the gifts. Yeah. And he said, well, you're very welcome. Let's get married. And she's like, oh, no. Yeah, he said that a bunch, I think. Yeah. He asked her quite a few times. Right. Which he always said no to. And um, he tried various methods to cure her, electroshock, uh, what they call potions of his own devising, uh, which include specks of gold. Mm-hmm. Might as well. Why not? I think uh, he, was, he added that just to impress her. Yeah, but sadly she passed at the age of 22 in 1931, and this is where it gets really, really weird. So um, he he paid for a funeral, a lavish funeral from mm -hmm. what we understand, and apparently he just couldn't live with the idea that his dear sweet love was rotting underground. Yeah, who really wasn't his dear sweet love. He was just obsessed with her. Yes, okay. Well, to him it was, sure. right? And uh, so he he paid to have a really nice mausoleum built, arranged for her to be exhumed. Her family was like, that's very nice of you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, started hanging out in the mausoleum at night. And when he was hanging <clears throat> out with her, he realized that over time he could hear her communicating with him. And she was saying, like, please, I can't bear to be alone in this mausoleum anymore. Yeah. Take me home with you. Yeah. You Bring me back <laughs> to life. You built an airship. Uh, because that was the dream in April 1933. Uh, he took her to the airship, um, which he called Countess Elaine. That was her name. Right. Well, her name was Elena. He, well, yeah. He germified it. And if he's the count, then she's the countess. Right. If he's the fake count, she's the fake countess. <laughs> um, so he took her to the airship, which he, apparently he planned to fly her to the stars one day in mm -hmm. and uh, tried to resurrect her over the course of seven years. He sort of reconstructed her as a uh, as a as a mummy of sorts. I, I think I get the impression he was not trying to mummify her, he was trying to stave off decomposition. Yeah. Cuz if you've ever been to Key West, 
it's muggy and hot down there. Yeah. Body's not going to do very well. So little by little, he started kind of like taking care of her with um, bandages <laughs> and paint. Piano and, wire. Yeah. Um, he t- Where her eyeballs used to be, he put in glass eyeballs. He took her hair out and made a wig with it to put it back on. Uh-huh. And just kind of slowly but surely kind of uh, tried to... Tried to keep her presentable, I guess. Yeah, it said among his resurrection tools was a million vo- uh, one million volt Tesla coil. Right. So the whole time he's doing this, he's trying to bring her back to life. Yeah. But it's not working, so he's staving off decomposition as best as he can, yeah. right? So her family finally gets wind of this, and the girl's sister comes over. Elena's sister comes uh-huh. over and is like, we've been hearing some weird stuff. Do you have my sister's body here? Yeah, is this now a house of horrors? Right. And it was. And he's like, yes, come see her. And she goes and tells the cops, and he's under arrest. Yeah, he gets arrested. Uh, The public, turns out, was very sympathetic. They thought it was a very romantic gesture, this guy Mm -hmm. and his true love. He was just trying to hold on to that. Um, And it seems like it could have been a little sweet story until things get- Until the 70s, right? A little weird. In uh, the 70s, it was- well, they performed an autopsy on her way back then, and in 1972, the results were released. Right. And it turns out, how should we say this? Uh, there was some heavy necrophilia going yeah, on. Yeah, he had been having sex with this sort of semi-preserved dead body. For years. Yeah. Like, she was out of the ground and in his house, and he was sleeping beside her for years. And they weren't all, they weren't just sleeping the whole time. Uh, no, I'll just go ahead and read this. Uh, I made the examination in the funeral home. This is Dr. Depu, is his name. I know. Kind of weird. Uh, the breast felt really real. Um, really, really, really real. In the vaginal area, I found a tube wide enough to permit sexual intercourse. Okay, so let's just give the guy the benefit of the doubt, right? Could have been anything. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of the tube was cotton, and in an examination of the cotton, I found. Uh, there was semen. Oh, so yes. Yeah, he. It was proven. It took a pretty dark turn from an already did. dark story. So this came out in the seventies, right before um, Depu. I guess w- around the time he retired, he yeah. performed the autopsy thirty years earlier and just kept his mouth shut about it. Sure. Um, I bet at dinner parties he was like, "By the way, <laughs> right in the right in the meantime, um, uh, von Kassel." had been let out of jail, Mm -hmm. and he had moved to Zephyr Hills. Zephyr Hills. I've never known how to say that. I think that's right. Zephyr Hills. Um, Florida. Yeah. Where the famous water's from. And he he kind of created a shrine to his lost love who'd been taken from him and secretly buried. But he made a wax effigy to show people what she had looked like. Yeah. And there were visitors, and he basically was running a museum out of his sister's house based on the notoriety he gained from that that episode, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they found out later on that that wax effigy was actually her. He'd gotten her back. Yeah. He he intercepted her during her secret burial, paid off the guys who were supposed to secretly bury her, and they buried a box of bricks, basically, and gave the body to this guy. Yep. And that ends the story. Actually, it ended in 1952 when he finally died, uh, slumped over the effigy, which was not an effigy, right. of his beloved Elena. So, boy, that is one of the weirdest things. Yeah, there's a we got this one from Voltini.com. Yeah, and hopefully there are pictures of her uh, Lots of pictures. up there. Yeah. I didn't want to draw attention to it. She didn't look great. No, and you know when they did that autopsy, when they when they everybody found out about it and became public, yeah, the undertaker was like, "I'm going to make some money off this," and started charging people to come look. And like six thousand people showed up. Yeah, there weren't that many people in Key West at at, at the time as a whole. Yeah, probably not. Like people came from everywhere around to see that. It's like half the town was at Margaritaville, and the <laughs> other half was checking out this corpse. Yeah, uh, and we'll finish with this one. Uh, I kind of picked this mainly to make fun of it. Because it's uh, how to recover from sleepless nights, according to an expert, Dr. Carol Ash. There are a few good tips in here. And then there are tips like this. What's the best way to recover from a night of no sleep? And the answer is take a nap. (laughs) (laughs) There's some other good ones, though, like um, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to get back to sleep fast. Yeah. Dr. Ash says start 
um, relaxing your muscles one at a time. So focus on relaxing your toe muscles, and then your heel muscles, and then that your trick. ankle muscles, and then your calf muscles. And she says that by the time uh, you get to your neck, you're usually asleep. That's uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. If you're having a genuine like stress induced uh, insomnia, you get to your neck and you're like, "Yep," and that's where it's the most tense. Back to the toes. Well, she's she's talking mostly about suffering from sleep apnea. Oh right, if you are awakened in the middle of the night. Yeah, and apparently, like ten million Americans suffer from it. I wake up in the middle of the night. How can I fall back asleep fast? Just relax. <laughs> yeah, Chuck doesn't like this article. <laughs> I just think it could. It, it was clearly uh, the product of a of a corporation coupled with an advertiser. Mm. I'm not going to say either one. Oh, is it? Oh yeah. And I fell for it. Yeah, it was. It was. I feel like a dumb dumb. It was commissioned by a, a airline. Okay. And I will go ahead and say, not the one that you might be watching this program on. That's all I'll say. Uh, what's the ideal length of a nap? This is actually decent. Twenty minutes. That's what I've always heard. Uh, nothing over 40, because that's when you risk falling into REM sleep, uh, which could leave you groggy. Why would an airline sponsor an article on sleep apnea? Any ideas? Um, like, I get if CERTA's sponsoring it or something like that. It just says, as part of our in-flight office hours on the importance of sleep, this airline's passengers ask Ash their most burning sleep questions. Mm. Answers, Burning sleep questions. That's a that's a great adjective. <laughs> answers that Doctor Ash can put to rest. It says in quotes. Get it? Gotcha. Rest, sleep. Man, I'm really ashamed. Uh, and the thing that you can do to, uh, I think everybody knows this. The thing you can do to improve your sleep is to avoid screens. Um, it always <laughs> cracks me up when I see on the social meds. Oh John no, Hodgman where are we say. doing that? <laughs> on social media, when people say. Ugh, you know, one a.m. can't fall asleep. Right. It's like you know, you're staring at a phone. Well, Casey and brought typing. up Casey brought up something um, that Yumi actually uses too, where your your screen slowly as the time gets closer to bedtime, uh-huh. your screen converts from the blue end of the spectrum to more of like a calming yellow end of the spectrum. Oh, is there an app for that? I uh-huh. guess. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, and I guess the iPhone might. Um, might have a function to it now as I see well. Casey nodding. In yeah, mind. well, that's where I learned it. Uh, so you wake up just like with your phone on your eye and like <laughs> drool coming out of I your I always mouth. like make this, there's a smacking sound as my phone <laughs> like hits my chest because I've fallen asleep reading. All right, that's Internet Roundup for the week. One good one, That was one a bad long one. one. It was. Uh, and we'll see you next week in the studio. <laughs>